I'm Jerry Agar in for Ezra Levant. Yesterday on the show, I spoke out against assisted suicide and spoke to ethicist Margaret Somerville, who agreed with me. Now for the other argument. Wayne Sumner is Professor Emeritus of Philosophy, the University of Toronto. His most recent book is Assisted Death, a study in ethics and law joins me now. Professor, welcome for coming. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having and me. welcome. That's what I was <laughs> trying to say. So uh, you think this is an ethical thing to do? I do. I think it's as ethical as the other current end-of-life uh, care options that are available to Canadians already. Such as? Uh, withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment, which uh, will hasten death. There are various ways in which people can hasten their own deaths if they, if they want to, uh, most of which are now legal. Uh, refusal of any further life-sustaining treatment is one of them. Um, agreeing to ramping up uh, pain medication or even as far as terminal sedation in order to deal with pain, even though that might also hasten death is another. I don't think there's any significant ethical distinction between the options that are currently available to Canadians and an assisted death. Well, I think this uh, debate has been limited to uh, one of the people who are suffering great pain, and they're maybe very close to dying regardless. But that's not what happens. This is an incredible, I think, slippery slope, and, and we'll end up putting people to death because they just don't want to live anymore. They're just tired of it. It's not fun. You probably know that when uh, in jurisdictions in which, say, assisted suicide is legal, uh, say, Oregon, when you ask those who avail themselves of it what their motivation is, pain is very uh, seldom the, the primary consideration right. because pain is easiest to control. You can control pain with medication, as I say, even up to the point of just simply sedating the patient into unconsciousness. What people tend to complain of much more than pain is loss of dignity, loss of independence, the inability to do the things that make their life worthwhile, and so on. These are still people who are dying. They're still mm -hmm. people with terminal illnesses. But their suffering is not uh, primarily a matter of pain. Well, uh, in fact, we're looking at it now. This is from the Oregon Public Health uh, report. They do a report every year. They're required to. Yes. And 90.1% of people decreasing ability to participate in activities. Another would be loss of autonomy. Mm -hmm. People are picking several of these at once. That's yes. why the numbers are so high. Yes. Loss of dignity. So you're right. Pain is not number one. But... Uh, it, it strikes me as very uncomfortable to put somebody to death just because they say, you know, I just don't feel like this anymore. Bear in mind that uh, in these Oregon figures, 80% of the people you're looking at are terminal cancer cases. They're dying anyway. And indeed, within the terms of the Oregon policy, their death is expected to happen regardless within six months. So we're not talking about people coming off the street and saying, ah, my life's not worthwhile anymore. Can you, you know, please yeah, do something for me? but I think we get there. We haven't got there anywhere else. We well, haven't got there. Oregon's been we, running for 15 we, years now. The policy hasn't changed at all. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another uh, statistic, a bar graph here from Oregon, where uh, when, when they put it in place versus today, Margaret Somerville said yesterday on the show that abortion was a good example. Abortion, when we brought it in legally, would be rare. Now, of course, it's common. Here we see in 98, with 16 people put to death, we get to 2011, 71 people put to death, and I would expect that graph will continue to climb. It might or might not, but this is all within the terms of the same policy. The terms of the policy have never changed. I think what's happened in Oregon is that the policy has increasingly been accepted there, taken for granted there as a part of normal health care in Oregon. More people have been motivated to take advantage of it. And by the way, there are a great many people in Oregon who um, go as far as uh, requesting a, a prescription for terminal medication, having their doctor provide it, and then never using it. For them, the fact that the option is there is enough for, to get them through their, their final dying process. I want to play you a clip from Margaret Somerville's visit yesterday on the show. This, to me, was the most powerful thing that she said. She talked about the Netherlands and the experience of elderly people in the Netherlands. And we know that old people in the Netherlands are so frightened now of going into hospitals or going to doctors that they're crossing over the border into Germany because they feel safe in Germany because Germany, because of its history, is really anti-euthanasia. How do you react to that? I believe that's a myth. Um, one thing to keep in mind in, in all of these places, including... You don't know that it's a myth. You believe it's a myth. I believe it's a myth. Um, I've never heard from any reputable source that there's any um, elevated degree of concern on the part of the elderly in the Netherlands because the Netherlands has a euthanasia policy. But one thing to keep in mind is we keep talking about um, this as though it's a problem for the aged, for the elderly. 
But um, the, the figures for both euthanasia and assisted suicide skew surprisingly young. A great number of them are uh, patients who avail themselves of these um, options are under 65. And again, the reason for that, when you think about it, it's fairly obvious. Overwhelmingly, the condition that leads people to seek these uh, options out is cancer. And cancer strikes the young as much as the elderly. It's relatively few people who are suffering from what we normally think of as the, the diseases of the aged who are uh, availing themselves of this. The numbers actually, the percentages actually go down with age. When you get to 80 plus, there are not very many people actually uh, um, availing themselves of this. It's, it, it seems to me, I love the uh, abortion comparison that mm -hmm. Margaret Somerville made because we have a very casual attitude now about killing babies and we're gonna have a casual attitude about killing people who are sick. We become less and less a culture of life. Well, the abortion figures are pretty stable. They haven't changed very much. They, in fact, haven't changed very much since abortion became legal in this country. They tend to be flatlined. Uh, we, ad we address abortion in other ways, trying to um, avoid unwanted pregnancies rather than trying to deal with them that way. I don't no, think abortion there's... is used in this country as retroactive birth control. You know that's true. I'm not denying that that's true. I'm just saying that we have and other that's ways. that's a horror, really? We have other ways of addressing Well, you may think it's a horror. I'm, I'm less convinced that it's a horror. But in terms of, the, um, of euthanasia, Again, if you look at the experience elsewhere, I don't think the Dutch are casual about life. They're decent people, just like us. The ad attitudes toward life and death in the Netherlands, I don't believe have changed one little bit. The homicide rate hasn't gone up. People don't go around you know, murdering one another uh, to any greater extent than they did before. Um, the Netherlands is a peaceful, Sure, sure they do. We're legalizing it. It's, 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 you know, I go along with what a columnist said yesterday. Let's call it what it is. It's legalized homicide. Yeah, it's legalized homicide. So All right, what? then the homicide rate goes up. No, the homicide rate is the rate is the murder rate, as you know perfectly well. well um, that's, yes, but, but also, that's what it is. But, they, but look, even the euthanasia rate in the Netherlands doesn't go up. Right? It's it's been uh, fairly stable since the uh, the policy came into into place, as well. It's not as though you know there are increasing numbers of people dying even within the terms of these policies. Um, either in Oregon or in, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Well, everybody dies anyway, uh, but That's if right. you want to look at it that way, but they're going up in Oregon, as we just saw. They're going up gradually, um, and they may but, continue yeah, so to what? go up. They may so flip. it's going up gradually. Who cares? But look, these That's are, the casual these are, attitude these that are, bothers me. These are people who are asking for this. These are people who are requesting it. They have to go through incredible hoops in order to exercise this kind of control over their own dying process. And in Canada, if they try to do that, What's the problem? The state gets in the way and says they can't do that. You can't have that. You can have these other options, but you can't have this one. The state's the problem here. Thanks for coming in.